So let's take a look at the Linux boot process. The Part of the point behind taking a look at this would be better customization of your computer um, if you're looking at doing any type of customization. So if you want to make it boot faster or you want to make it start up with certain things that are better for your productivity. Maybe you're a writer and most of the time you go in and you use your word processor. Probably if you're watching this video you're probably more like a programmer and you want to start your favorite uh, integrated development environment or IDE program. And maybe you would like to start your computer up and have it do everything it needs to do on its own while you go out and get yourself a nice cup of hot chocolate to come on in and sit in front of your nice hot fans on your computer and see by the time you get in there you want it ready to go you don't want anything extra on there slowing it down you want it to go right into what you needed to do so understanding the whole process of what it goes through to boot can help to trim the fat off of the uh, boot process make it faster make it lighter less memory usage uh, less time uh, so we're going to use an example here which is really going uh, booting up Linux uh, starting like a XFCE or really just any other uh, GUI desktop and then starting a batch shell terminal emulator so what all is in here? Because these are different things that people oftentimes like to customize. Is the root computer, the GUI, and you know, XFCE is particularly what I'm kind of going to be having in mind while I'm going over this. But most of what I'm going to say is probably going to relate to almost any other GUI. And then um, a lot of times people like to customize their shells too. So I'm going to get into that last. Um, and the terminal emulator is a little bit further along so that's part of the reason why I wanted to use that last so all right let's go ahead and take a look and see what steps it goes through what steps your computer goes through to get started when you first put your computer when you first turn your computer on it's going to run power through all those circuit boards on the inside of your computer they in there have ROM chips and CMOS chips. ROM chips have a bunch of uh, programs, whatever the initial programs are. CMOS that has those settings. Uh, basic Input Output System or BIOS. All those, all that's a part of that BIOS. And its job is to run the hardware at the hardware level and get things started. To customize the BIOS, you're going to need to look up your your motherboard's ma uh, manual for that individual mother motherboard. It may be different based on make or model. Usually, it's like one of the function keys you start that you press and hold when you start up. Sometimes it might just be a simple press. Maybe a different button too. Certain ones are different buttons. Find out what your motherboard is. And then there's a setup utility you can usually go on into and you can change your boot orders, you can change your system board time, change a bunch of different other settings for it, um, whether or not it starts with number lock on, all kinds of different things. Just depends on your motherboard as far as what all it has. You can sometimes even schedule when they start up and shut down. So you could even set it up to where your computer turns itself on at a particular time. If you know you're going to be at work at eight in the morning you want to start work at eight in the morning then you could have your computer start up you know at 850 or 855 based on the motherboard settings tell it to start up at that time and start its process that way it's already started up by the time you get there just depends on the motherboard as far as which options you're gonna have but that's something which you can go through and take a look at that uh, but then once we get on into the bootloader which for Linux a lot of times that's grub um, but from bootloader on a lot of your settings are gonna be in an ETC directory right off the root of your file system there are sometimes some other features that you can go on into as well uh, other utilities that you can use to 
modify some of these settings. The bootloader, uh, in this case we're talking about Grub, that's when you get to your screen where it asks you, you know, to start your which Linux you're going on into. Are you going into are you going into Debian? Are you going into Fedora? Are you going into whatever it be? That gives you your boot menu. If you've ever had one of those computers where, or ever seen or heard about one of those computers that has a boot menu where you can choose, you know, to go into Microsoft DOS or various different versions of Windows or various different versions of Linux and you've got all those options that's the bootloader that's giving you that it's actually seated in the boot directory off the root however you want to modify it based on things that are in the ETC directory and then there's a utility you should run uh, at least that's the way it is set up on Debian and you just want to double check make sure here that you're not make sure you read the comments because it should be in there if you can't modify it directly so the BIOS is needed the the BIOS is not going to be aware of file systems or partition tables or any of that it's just going to know to look at the master boot records or whatever other options it has but basic options of the various large volumes of the various drives that it recognizes at its level uh, some systems especially like server motherboards may recognize a hardware raid and so it may have access to certain other things through that it may have certain other advanced options but it's usually very basic and it's going to look for a master boot record where there's going to be a grub bootloader or other bootloader whatever it be it's going to look for that bootloader and then that bootloader can be aware of further details to be able to find a kernel to really start looking into those uh, partition tables and directory structures and find your uh, particularly it's more more your partition tables that it's going to be able to look into to find your kernel actually it does look into directory structures as well it needs to be able to know the directory structures of wherever it's starting because um, it's going to find that kernel that's inside of your uh, inside of your directory tree and then the kernel starts and the kernel's job is to do all of the other major high-level input output it is a fully aware system it runs all of your kernel modules it runs all your device drivers all your services and even your applications your user logins all that that's all done through the kernel uh, so kernel settings and so trimming off your kernel may be starting a whole bunch of services or even running mods and stuff like that that you maybe don't need and you might save some time some memory all that trimming the fat off of what's starting off at the kernel level uh, you know that's something that you can look at there's from bootloader down looking in the etc directory you'll find a whole bunch of stuff in there for dealing with these things uh, once the once the kernel's done whatever it needs to do to get started up it's then going to allow the interface to start whether that be your text-based interface or whether you have a GUI on there and in our case we have a GUI so it's going to start up with your login manager and then it's going to go on into you know your XFCE because that's what we're going into now a lot of times your login managers can have a choice you can have many choices of different uh, different desktops but in our case yeah we went into the XFCE desktop but it's going to start that desktop and so we start that now there's also once you're in your GUI you have a few other spots and these 
These settings that you're going to find, they're really just a graphical front end to manage what's in the ETC and at this point also inside of your home user directory wherever your user root is there's additional hidden files in there that contain a whole bunch of settings so you know we're going to take when you go into there when you go into your GUI you can also go up to your programs manager in your programs manager uh, you're going to find a, a area down there under settings uh, your, your programs menu go up to your programs menu you should find a settings option and there's a whole bunch of settings in there those are all little programs that you can run that will be graphical utilities to manipulate those settings files either in the etc or in that or in that user home and that can also be used to that's where you can set up your graphical user interface to start up a program at its level so linux kernel can start it up as a service or you can start it up as a gui application in your interface if you wanted to pre-start an application that you wanted to use there's also the terminal as well in bash so if you're going to start the terminal at that point now you want to start bash while you're already in xfce the terminal emulator is required because everything that happens in a gui environment is graphical so to run anything text wise it has to be interpreted graphically and that's where the terminal emulator comes into play it's grabbing bash it starts bash as a sub process gives all your keystrokes over to bash and then interprets all the outputs into its graphical user output into its window and shows that to you but it has to be turned graphically because it's in a graphical environment well once that sub process of bash is started either from the terminal emulator or directly as an interface as an interface terminal that bash born again shell sh is for shell ba is for born again so born again shell it has additional things that it's going to look for in the etc and the uh, home directory a lot of times those are hidden files so the best way to find a hidden file is to do the ls space dash a command that's ls is for listing directory contents and a dash the space means we're now going into additional parameters dash means we're going into options and the a option is for listing all uh, that will give you a whole bunch of all your hidden files that are in your uh, home directory they're hidden so that way while you're doing your general work you don't have to deal with them but they're there so everything that's in your in your personal home directory like that that's stuff that only manages with your session everything that's in etc deals with all your sessions and most of everything in etc is organized based on which application it is so a lot of times they have files or names you know things that deal with bash if you really want to find out what deals with bash after you're done with that command before you push enter that ls space dash a you can also do pipe grep space bash or whatever else you're looking for if you're not looking for bash look for whatever else you're looking for but whatever those things are and then that will filter out grep filters out all lines that don't contain what's in that parameter so you're piping that output of that directory listing through to a bash process or sorry to, through to a grep process that analyzes those lines and says this line contains that string therefore I will output it that can that line does not contain that string 
therefore I will discard it. And therefore, so everything that's being outputted through the LS goes through the grep and is filtered, basically. It's a great way to search and filter things out on directory listings or anything else that you want to do if you're looking at a file. You know, you want to find lines that only contain certain things. That's an option. So, yeah, all that stuff in there that has to do with Bash, you're going to see also something in there to a dot .profile uh, file as well that deals with your Bash startup. That sets all your environment variables, runs your initial scripts, you know, sets up all your other coolness, all your other settings, all your other colors, everything else dealing with a Bash session is going to be in there. So that's where you go through and find all your customization for that. And in those files as well, you could start up a program initially as well. There's that option. There's also the option too to set up a command for the terminal emulator to start running with. It's in its command line options that you could tell it to start uh, running in certain directories or running certain programs. There's all kinds of options. If you want to find out more about options of some of these commands too, a lot of times typing the command space dash dash help will give you a list of various different options and it will oftentimes explain those options as well. So you can type, take a look, you know, if you want to know more about the terminal emulator, find out the command that starts the terminal, the terminal emulator and then type that command space dash dash help and then press enter and then you should see everything else. And if you need to see more than will fit on that screen as a lot of those help things are more than will fit you can pipe that to more that allows you to push the space bar between each time to show it a page at a time or you can also pipe it to less which allows you to scroll it with your arrow keys and your page up page down. Uh, Q can exit out of pipe less. Um, pipe more, you just get to the end. I think you can also exit out of Q possibly as well. Uh, I generally use pipe less as you, uh, most commonly what I'll use. Seems like there's another one too. Oh yeah, you can also use um, tail to just get, and that's more so with files that you'd use tail or head to get just a start or just the end of a file. It's great if you're looking at a log file that's been appended. You want to look, find the last few log entries. You don't want to see the whole file. Type tail space the log file name. Um, cat shows everything if you want to see a file and show cat. But anyway, um, you, know, you can open up those things in your uh, text-based or graphical-based editor. Any of those files, edit them, customize them, and customize your system better. Thank you for watching.